Yo, 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 boys and girls, it's your modest hero here. I've even got my mobile phone because I don't have my camera with me. What a fault job. Ironically, filming on my mobile phone may actually mean my audio isn't cack. And if I had my actual microphones and camera with me. Sorry if it's all a bit wobbly. But uh, yeah, fault job. Lost power to the garage about three weeks ago, they say. Okay, got a little subboard in the garage. Had the cover off that. No power. Kind of expected to find maybe a, a blown fuse in the garage or something like that. Or something tripped off. But no, no power to the garage. Okay, so this is a... Detached garage being fed by an armoured cable. Let's go and have a look at the, uh, the house end. Okay, so there's an armoured cable coming out the back of the garage. It crosses over to the house. And here's where it enters the house. So I'm using my CA757. Uh, my neutral is dead. You can see that. Nothing there. Nothing on the CPC. It's all dead, Jim. Nothing there at all. Thinking power from the consumer units not getting to where it should be. Okay. Well, I'm getting 237 volts out of the breaker with respect to neutral. I really expected it to be a, a breaker fault here. Either the switch not quite clicked on mechanically or perhaps it's burnt out through a loose connection, but no, it's okay. Yet that exterior box, which has no sign of life, is just on the back side of this wall. So the cable must be exiting at the rear of the consume unit, down the wall and out. And it's original to the build of the house. But permit me to show you kids. Yeah, the side of the wall here. There's our box down there. The consume unit is going to be pretty much directly above the busted meter cabinet. Oh, we want... Let me get your opinion on this. He asked for uh, the plumber to put a tap on the outside wall. He's come out the the ensuite there. Oh, way along the back. And uh, get a load of this. No problem there, right? Except uh, plumbers. <laughs> Plumbers put that monstrositoire in directly over the socket, pissed water all over the socket, and had to get an emergency electrician out who's disconnected that socket. That's one of those new BG smart sockets as well, so it's probably forked. Disconnected that, the pipes obviously have been disconnected. Are you supposed to run pipes on the outside like that? Would it not freeze and potentially burst? It's probably what happened actually. Burst at the tap end in the cold weather and soaked the socket. But it does mean for me, because I'm going to have to drill out the back of that CU to get a cable out here. Because obviously we, we appear to be looking at a failed cable in the wall, which is unusual. You don't see many cable failures in walls. The only time I've really come across one before uh, in, that, in that way, if it hasn't been like drilled or you know damaged in some other way, but uh, is where there's been subsidence. And I've seen a subsidence put strain on a cable and break it, but there's no obvious answer as to why there's power just on the other side of here and no power down here rather curious so i'm gonna to have to get a new cable out which means drilling out through the back of that cu to, which is going to come out up here somewhere and then i'm gonna to have to get around this shonky water pipe to get a new feed down to there so i'm thinking containment some black plastic conduit i'll have to give a kick over the pipe i guess it's a funny one isn't it Shouldn't take too long. Not a cold day. Quarter to ten in the morning. Yeah, let's do it. There is a wall fixing below the CU which potentially could have pierced the cable, but apparently that's been there for years. So to get a new feed out of the board, I'm going to drill through this area on the side rather than through the existing rear opening, just to keep my massive bit clear of other wiring. And drilling here should keep me away from any final circuits and away from the tails going back to the meter box. Ah, that's the nice thing about these new houses. Bricks were as soft as shite. That was no trouble at all to drill through. Always a bit, got to drill through a bit gingerly when you're drilling through the back of a consumer unit like that. You know that 
tails and circuits are going to be running somewhere in that line but I was pretty confident I was out of zone for that sort of stuff and once I drilled the initial hole I stuck my torch and made sure I couldn't see anything made sure the drill didn't feel like it was hitting anything other than brick on the other side but yeah it's always a bit of a twitchy bomb moment drilling through from a consumer unit nonetheless that's the scary part done the rest as they say ought to be easy putting my key to workbench to good use I noticed that eFix did a video on the key to workbench quite recently I bet they got paid lots of money for it I didn't, I bought mine from Tool Station, but so I'll tell you what, as I said in another video, my self lighting video, bloody good bit of kit that. I do like having that around on site. I'm going to stick me, me weeness into this PVC conduit and form myself a, a kick to get over that pipe. And then I'm going to stick a 90 degree bend in it into a termination box. Where have I put that? It's in my pocket here. Conduit termination box. I'm going to make a hole in the back of that. Bring it along, kick over the pipe, down another 90 degree into the side of that box. I'm going to put a drain hole in that box as well. It's just a case of pulling the, the wires through. I'm not sponsored by Bosch either. It's just free, free top I got, but it's very nice, very warm. It says X lock on the side. Some, someone says it looks like it says cock if you look at it more. boast about having a well stocked van but I've just realised I've got no bloody black conduit couplers on the van so that's a shame. There's no wholesalers anywhere near here either. <laughs> too shabby as it goes. I'm hoping I won't need any couplers but I don't know I might I might not make that distance with what I've got there. I'm going to try and put a bend in the top to get it to that position. Uh, but the horrible feeling is going to be a bit short though. I may end up if I don't get the bend exactly right or if it doesn't meet up I might just cut that and put an inspection bend in and then that gets me away from the need for a coupler then because I'll be able to use that to splice a second bit of conduit to it for the length. It's all about the bending and the length and your dinger spring in this video, isn't it? it ought to be X-rated. Oh, I really must tidy this van up to stop things like that from happening. Oh, for fuck's sake. I hate Fridays. Oh, thousands of screws picked up later and, well, the mechanics are in. Had to use two inspection bends in the end. Probably could have done that as a just a, a bend in the conduit, but I'll admit I got it in the wrong place and it, it wasn't quite right. So I thought, you know what, let's just put an inspection bend in. I'm not terribly good with the mechanics and this sort of stuff. Nigel's always better than me for this sort of stuff. I'd normally let him address the mechanics while I got on the, the clever stuff. Anyway, the draw wire's in, so I'm ready to pull in some singles and we can get the panel back on. It's a bit of a shame, it's a 16 amp circuit, I'm going to pull in 2.5 more singles. But I say it's a shame, it's simply because obviously a lot of people want EV chargers on their garages and they're still building houses today that have a 2.5 mil 16 amp feed to detached garages. And I had a, a couple of jobs where they wanted a car charger and like... You haven't got a lot of meat to play with here, and um, you often end up just having to pull a new a new feed in. It's ridiculous. I don't know why they're still building them like that. House builders are just so backward and stupid and cheap. But there you go. Anyway, let's get these singles pulled in. This is all taken rather longer than expected, as my jobs always do. I always uh, underestimate how much time they'll take. 
everything's pulled in, connected up. I've got a loop on at the uh, consumer unit end. Obviously that's not been terminated yet. I've got to do some dead testing, so it's time to go back into the garage. We've got a knobby and an probe. And uh, do uh, some testing, R1, R2, insulation resistance, all that sort of stuff. Make sure that there's no other surprises between DB1 and DB2 here. R1, R2 of 0.26. Probably about right for its money, the distance it's going. The CPC that I've just put in through my uh, conduit. I've had to pull in as a 4mm because I didn't have any 2.5mm on the van so I had one five, but I thought screw it let's just stick a 4mm in so there's a, a bit less resistance on that leg of the earth fault loop path because I'm using a slightly um, fatter CPC. No matter. Insulation resistance testing passed as did all the loop testing. Power is back onto DB2. I'm getting an earth fault loop impedance of 0.7 from the socket so marvellous we would appear to be back in business jab jab not too bad i would have preferred to have done it with perhaps one less inspection bend but what can i tell you anyway never mind we're all back in business you know what friday lunchtime i'm going to treat myself to a kebab and chips yeah, you mothers. Proper fucking filth. <laughs> oh, marvellous. Perhaps a bit of a nothing video, this, I suppose, because it wasn't really finding the fault, was it? I went there to, to find a fault. Found uh, that there was a fault on the cable, but couldn't tell you what that fault, the reason for that fault being there, or exactly where it was. So I had to just replace the cable. So not really a, a lot to, to talk about in this video. Sorry if it's really boring. Anyway, I suppose it goes to show that the um, part of the problem with this sort of job is obviously that someone's phoned up and said we've got no power in our garage. I don't know if I'm going to go there and it's going to take five minutes to find a fuse and, and change it out or whatever, or if it's going to take a good couple of hours to sort out as indeed today's job has. So it makes scheduling tough. Now, fortunately, today I had I was going to go and do a job. Uh, it's one of these drop-in jobs where they say, oh, turn up any time you want and just carry on. It's, it's a job that's going to take a while, so uh, they're happy for me to just turn up uh, as needed, do a few hours here and there and bugger off. So I had got that on the back burner. Uh, I've got another little job to go and do as well. So I was able to throw the morning to getting this thing fixed. But it's, it, scheduling's really tricky um, because it's hard to... To be reactive sometimes if you go and block book your whole week up then you've got no time to be reactive to this kind of thing coming in uh, the other option of course would have been obviously identified very quickly on that uh, it was a cable fault was a supply fault and i could have gone away and booked that timing in to, to go and sort it out but anyway enough of me wobbling on let's move to the coffee shout outs which i i think i should do from the, uh, my salubrious new bathroom. There's a reason for why videos have been a bit slow lately. <coughs> it's because in the run up to Christmas, I had a new bathroom put in. I was quite involved with it, with sorting out uh, electrics and stuff. And there was other parts of the house being worked on as well. So uh, let's do the shouts from the bathroom. Ahoy hoy and welcome to the new bathroom at Shea Savory. This has been ongoing over November and December and has rather served to curtail my video output so sorry about that. Not that it was me fitting it, we had a proper bathroom fitter in but I've been quite involved in a few home improvements over the last couple of months that have kept me busy. I would show you around it more but for some reason the wife has chosen now to use the facilities while I'm trying to record this. Don't blame me for your bad timing. I've had a turtle's head hanging out of the back of my thong all morning. Christ, it's extruding out around the back string like Play-Doh in a fun factory. Oh my God, woman, have you got no shame? I I I'm mic'd up here, for goodness sake. Mm. You know there's another loo downstairs, right? Christ, this thing is solid. 
I'm giving birth to a cylinder here. I'm just going to have to try and press ahead regardless. Uh, Virgin Fishbait 075, a long time viewer and commenter. Suppose I owe you a few fosters or suitable alternative. Thanks for popping your cherry on here, Fishbait 075, and I apologise for the, uh, the way it's been popped. Uh, a whore, Nigel Tutman. Happy New Year, says Nigel Tutman. <laughs> piss everywhere. Right? What are you doing? Don't get up to look at it for fuck's sake. Holy Jesus. It's like an independent landmass with its own brown moat. Bring the camera over. You should put this on the fucking YouTube. Look, you could plant a flag in the cunt. I swear to God, if you don't pull that flush right now, woman. This ain't going down without a fight. You mark my words. Uh, oh, Darren Briddock of Electrical and Test Limited. Nice to see you back on here again, Darren. Can't wait to see the next AFDD installment. Yes, that is coming. Having spoken to the Hager Gang at Alex, I was not impressed with how dismissive they were of actual findings. Hmm, well, okay. Son of a bitch. Another whore, Andy Karoosh. It's not been the same without Nigel. I just don't feel the same urge to punch the screen anymore. Oh, I don't know, Andy. You might do after this one. This bog brush is useless. Get around that you bend, you fucker. Oh, I'm so sorry about this. Ah. Oh, whore, Jim Hook, from me, myself and I, and the wild burbs of Sydney. Yes, thank you for tuning in from Down Under once again, Jim. And another oldie but goldie, we have Oldest Apprentice in the ah. Northwest, who is a whore, of course. Look at the vid on Green Cable. Great idea. Definitely going to use your code, who the fuck misses Nigel. I'm sure Nigel's not missing this. Box And uh, finally for the Buy Me A Coffee segment, another whore, Mr. Humbug. Nice to see you as always, Mr. Humbug. There it goes. The Coast Guard should put out a warning to shipping in the English Channel. <sighs> super wanks. Wayne's Dare 6512 is a green super wanking whore. Thank you, Wayne's Dare 6512. Anonymous Mark Eastwood is an orange super wanking hall. Very generous. Thank you once again, Anonymous Mark Eastwood, for your contribution. Mm. And finally, and for the third time in a row, I think, in the third video in a row, Aramac56, who is a blue super wanker. Thank you, Aramac56, for once again contributing. Mm. Uh, again, I, I apologise for all this. I think we should just kick off the end titles. Now what are you doing? I think the fucker's torn me. Hell's bells, woman. Do you have to goatsy into the mirror like that? Whoops, looks like there's still some spray in there. Fuck's sake, you've got it all up the glass. Aye, that's going to require some silly bang for sure. 